Today, we'll be installing Kali Net Hunter with a full graphical user interface on an Android phone. As we already know, Kali Linux is a go-to operating system for security professionals. Kali Net Hunter is a version of Kali Linux specifically designed for Android devices. This gives you access to a vast array of ethical hacking tools right on your phone. So, in this video, let's see how to install Kali Net Hunter on any Android phone without root access. First, we'll download the Termux app from GitHub. I'll provide this GitHub link in the video description. Termux is an open source terminal emulator app. It acts like a Linux terminal on your Android device. We'll be using the Termux app to download and install Kali Net Hunter on your Android phone. Just click the first link to download the Termux APK file. After downloading, just install the APK file on your phone. After installation, launch the app. Now, in Tormux, we'll run these commands one by one. I'll put them in the video description. First, enter this command to grant Tormux access to your device internal storage. This is required because many tools and scripts within Tormux rely on access to storage to function correctly. Now, we'll install the wget utility using this command. The wget tool is required in Termux for downloading files from the internet. wget can handle various protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP. Next, we'll download the NetHunter installation script using this wget command. The script will automate the process of installing and setting up Kali NetHunter on your Android phone. Now the installation script is downloaded, but to run the script, it needs to have the execute permission. To give the execute permission to the installation script, you need to run this command. After making the script executable, you can run it by entering this command in Termux. Now, it'll ask you to choose an appropriate option for the NetHunter you want. The full version has all the pre-installed tools just like the real Kali machine. The minimal version has fewer pre-installed tools and the nano version doesn't include any tools but is set up to use Kali repositories and Kali-like settings. I'll go with the first option but you can choose second or third according to your preference. Now it'll download the appropriate Kali NetHunter image for your Android device. It will also install any required software packages that are not already present on your system. These packages might include tools needed for networking, compiling, and other system level tasks. Just wait 10 to 30 minutes for the process to be completed, depending on your internet speed. After downloading, it will prompt you to delete a file called rootfs. Rootfs is a residual that was downloaded during installation and is no longer useful to us, so deleting it will be beneficial. Simply type Y and continue. Now this screen will appear instructing you to launch Kali NetHunter. To start Kali, type NH and press enter. You'll now get a Kali terminal to use. So congratulations, you have successfully installed the Kali Linux command line interface on your Android device. Now, to get the full Kali Linux GUI or desktop interface, we'll be using another component of the Kali NetHunter project called NetHunter Kex. But before that, you need to run the Kex server by typing KEX in the Kali terminal. Then set a password for the Kex server. Enter N for the view only password. Once the Kex server is running, it creates a virtual instance of the Kali Linux desktop environment. It acts as a VNC server, allowing you to connect to it remotely. It broadcasts the virtual desktop environment over the network so that it can be viewed and controlled using a VNC client. Now, we'll connect to it using the NetHunter Kex client app. To get the NetHunter Kex client, 
First download and install the NetHunter store app from store.nethunter.com. Now open the NetHunter store app and download the NetHunter Kex client. Allow permission to install the app from the NetHunter store. Once installed, open the NetHunter Kex client. Tap the plus button. Here, enter the Kex server password that you just created. Change the port number to 5901. Click Save. Now tap on it to start the Kali Linux desktop interface. If you see this connection failed message, just run the Kex server again in Tormux. Once you are connected to the Kex server, you will be able to see the Kali Linux desktop interface on your Android device. You can use the touchscreen and an external keyboard to interact with the desktop. In Kali NetHunter, you have many pre-installed tools that can be used to assess the security of networks, systems and applications. For example, you can use the Nmap to scan and identify devices and services on a network. Some other tools are Walrus, Hijacker, RF tools etc. You can just explore and use your preferred tools from here. Guys, if you are using Android 12 or later versions, you may face a connection failed error after using the Kex desktop interface for about 1 to 2 minutes. If you check the Termux app, you will see that the Kex process is automatically completed with signal code 9. This means the process you are running in Termux is forcefully terminated by the Android system. This happens because in Android 12 or later versions, there is a system-wide limit on the total number of processes allowed to run simultaneously. This limit is typically set to 32. When you are running Kali desktop interface, the total number of processes exceeds the limit. And when it exceeds the system limit, the phantom process killer or Android starts terminating processes to maintain system stability. Then you get the connection failed error in the Kex app. To fix this problem, you have to disable the phantom process limit on your Android device. We can do so by running a simple ADB command using a computer. You just need to do it once. So if you don't have a computer, you can use a friend's or someone else's computer. First, open your phone settings. Go to about phone. Software information. Tap the build number 7 times to activate developer mode. Then go back. Select developer options. From here, you need to toggle on the USB debugging option. Now, connect your Android phone to a computer using a USB cable. To run ADB commands, you need to download the SDK platform tools on the computer. Just download it from this page. After downloading, extract the file. Then go inside the platform tools folder. Here, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and right click on your mouse. Then select open powershell window here. To verify if your phone is connected to the computer, type dot slash adb devices. You should see your device listed with a serial number. Now we'll disable the platform process limit on the Android device by entering these ADB commands one by one.
this adb command will set the maximum phantom processes limit to this value this is a very large value and will effectively disable the limit on phantom processes now to verify if the phantom process killer is disabled you need to run these two commands You should also disable the battery optimization for the Termux and Kex app from your phone settings. Now try connecting your Kali NetHunter again using the Kex app. Hopefully from now on you won't be facing the connection failed issue again. I hope this guide has been helpful. If you have any questions or run into any issues, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.